This is the new BMW 3 Series and it's a little bit like the British weather in the way that you know what you're going to get. So with the British weather, you know there's going to be rain. With the 3 Series, you know it's going to be a brilliant all-round car. In fact, it's so good, this has been awarded the 2019 CarWow Family Car of the Year Award. Yes, I do like it very much. It's not entirely perfect though, as I'll explain in this review. Now the 3 Series isn't cheap. It starts from £32,500, but you can save an average of £2,500 off one through CarWow. So if you're thinking about buying a new car, or you know someone who is, click on the pop-out banner up there, or follow the link below the video, or just go to CarWow to find out more how you can save money from our trusted dealers. Let's start by talking about this car's design. So has a really classy looking back end. I love the light design. Two-tone plastic, 3D effect. Makes the car look nice and wide, butch, masculine, tough, like a three series should look. Also, I highly respect BMW for this. I'm gonna use the car wow umbrella of truth to illustrate there are no fake exhaust pipes on this car. Thank goodness for that, although there are a few fake vents here. Smart looking rear end, the side of the car, it's all right, maybe a bit slab sided. You get different size alloy wheels depending on where you are in the range. The further you go at the range, the bigger your wheels become. Also, the window surrounds, they are black, which just makes it look a bit meaner, a little bit cooler, more modern than the chrome effect that you get on other cars. Lots of creases, make it look angular, make it look aggressive, as do these front lights, really cool lights on the car. Now, depending on which model, yet again, you go for, you get a slightly different look at the front end. The more sporty M Sport editions have deeper front bumpers, which are just more aggressive, and you get different effects in the grid as well, depending on which version you've got. But overall, this is a smart, classy, no-nonsense looking car. The interior design of this car is classic BMW. It's relatively conservative, but it still feels very modern, contemporary and nicely laid out. And it does that thing where everything's angled towards the driver because it's supposed to be the ultimate driving machine. Yes, the marketing has definitely worked on me, hasn't it? Also, I like the way there's lots of shiny bits of trim which liven things up. Does help brighten up the cabin. Now, I'm not so sure about this pattern though, here and here, because whenever I look at it, I think I'm gonna start getting a massive migraine. Quality though, cannot fault that at all. I love the way the door handles are solid metal and then pretty much every bit of trim that you press, even on the glove box, is soft and yielding, even down here as well. Slightly softer material on the door pockets. You don't get that in many cars. The only cheaper bits I can find are here and here, which, yeah, you're never gonna to touch there, really. Quality is lovely and it feels solid. Look at that. I'm gonna try and shake the center console and I'm just rocking about in my seat. Like a complete and utter idiot. Sorry, <laughs> had a bit of a wild weekend and I think I'm still recovering from it. Anyway, the thing that does dominate this dash are these digital instrument displays and that brings me on to this car's specs. The range starts with the SE model and it gets all-round parking sensors and a reversing camera as standard. It also has LED headlights, cruise control and automatic wipers, and three zone climate control. Next up is the sport model and it gets a slightly bigger fuel tank with 59 litre capacity and aluminum kit plates. Next up is the M Sport model and it gets a 10 inch touchscreen infotainment system rather than the nine inch screen that you get in the SE and sports cars, which I'll show you now. Yeah, this is much nicer. Also includes BMW's personal assistant, which is a little bit like Siri voice activation system. You also get a 12 inch fully digital driver's display rather than the kind of partially digital system you get in the Sport and the SE. That is better. It also gets lowered, stiffened sport suspension and more powerful brakes. And finally, an M Sport steering wheel and darkened headlining. Then there's the M Sport Plus Edition, which adds a limited slip differential, variable sports steering, and adaptive dampers, all designed to make the car drive even better. Then of course, BMW being BMW, there are a range of option packs, such as the premium pack, which includes a sunroof, and electrically adjustable front seats with memory function, all for 1,700 pounds. Anyway, enough of that, on with the review. Let's continue then by talking about the infotainment system because it is one of the very best there is. So the screen is nice and sharp and you can actually operate it through various methods such as I just operated it by accident then 
using the gesture control so you can waggle your hand about and do all kinds of things like that to skip track. That's quite handy when you're driving. I found it quite useful when I had a BMW. Or you can use a touch screen just by swiping like that and just going through the icons at the side of the screen. Or you can do it the old way with the swivel wheel or if you wanted the touch pad. Also, seeing as this is the rated system, I can use BMW's personal assistant and I activate it by going, hey BMW. Hello, what can I help you with? Take me to W1T4JD. Okay, I've selected London Cleveland Street. Add as intermediate destination or accept as destination. And I can use gesture controls to accept it like that. Come on. I've there we go. The <laughs> that is actually my old work address. It's really good that you can just put in a postcode like that just by saying it. It's super, super easy. So you can just jump in your car in the morning, get going, and when you're halfway on the route, you can just put in that destination and it will take you there. The satellite navigation system itself is pretty good and it uses live traffic updates to take you around the jams. Though, to be honest, it's not as good at doing that as the Waze app you can get on your mobile phone. And that brings you onto the digital driver's display, which I think isn't all that successful. So the design is kind of dark, also, it doesn't show as much information as you can get on the latest Mercedes digital driver's display or that from Audi. In fact, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of the Audi A4, just click on the pop-out banner up there. Now, that brings me on to this car's connectivity. So, it's actually all right. You've got a USB port under here. There's also a 12-volt charging socket. There's wireless charging in this car there, so I can charge my mobile phone. Underneath here, there's a USB-C input there. Though that's not quite so useful because I don't know many people who carry a USB-C to USB-C cable, so you'd have to get one specifically for the car. In terms of the layout of everything in here, it's actually really, really good. So you've got all your driving stuff just here, your gear selector and all your different driving modes and your cameras there. Then you've got your climate here and it's nice and easy to use, nice little digital display close to the buttons themselves. Your shortcut buttons there for the stereo. Then you've got your stereo controls here on the wheel. You've got your cruise control over here. Your lights are down there. It's all very simple. The driving position is generally quite good. So I like the fact that in BMWs, you can get the seat nice and low so it feels sporty. The steering wheel is nicely aligned as well. The only thing that bothers me slightly is the pedals are a little bit offset to the right. You feel like your, your feet are over in the right wheel arch. It's a little bit odd, but that is my only complaint. And there is quite a lot of movement, as you can see in the steering wheel and if you need it in the seat height as well. So you, if you're short, you can still see out over that big long bonnet. In terms of storage, well, it's actually pretty good. So we've got huge door bins that easily fit that bottle there. You've got these cup holders here and they're not too deep. So even if you have a small cup of coffee, you won't end up ripping the lid off when you're trying to remove it. That is good. And there's a bit of extra space under here, which is quite useful. A secret storage area there that's not so secret because I've just told you about it. And a glove box, which I would describe as mediocre. It's very easy to get into the back of the 3 Series. The door openings are nice and wide, also like this. The wheel arch is padded, so you don't hurt your body parts on hard metal bits when you're climbing in and out. Now, space back here is really, really good for a car of this size. So this new 3 Series is slightly longer between the front and rear wheels than the old version. That means you have more knee room. There's loads of knee room, in fact, and you can slide your feet under the chair in front. Also, the seat bases here in the back are very deep, so there's lots of under thigh support. Then if I sit up dead straight, look, I've got this much extra space above my head. Now, I'm 179 centimetres tall, which isn't that tall, but I've got a very long torso. Actually, someone over six foot will be fine back here. If you need to carry three people at once, there's this huge hump in the floor that you've got to get your leg across, and it does eat into foot space. But actually, the middle seat isn't totally terrible, even though you are slightly higher and headroom is reduced. But the body of this car is quite wide, so it's actually better for carrying three people in the back at once than an Audi A4 or a Mercedes C-Class. As for little bitty children, it's very easy to get a child seat through that back door, even one of those big rear-facing seats, and there's enough room as well that you don't have to move the front passenger seat forward to get it in. And it's easy to lock as well because you've got flip-up Isofix anchor covers, so you won't lose those in other cars. They're removable and they're easily lost. Also, you can fit two child seats in the back here and still have enough room for someone to sit in between if you need to. Now, in terms of carrying kids who are a slightly older age, they'll be all right in here. Now, the, the window ledge is quite high, so it's harder for them to get a view out, but I do like the fact that the 
windows do go all the way down, then most of the time they are going to be on their iPads or mobile devices. And you do have two USB ports there, but once again, the USB-C to USB-C, stop it! And there's a 12 volt socket there. I guess BMW just future proofing their cars because we are all moving that way, aren't we? In terms of storage, look, we've got some netage here. Door bins, huge, look, huge door bins. And then underneath the armrest, there is some more cup holdery zones there. I like that, nicely engineered. And if you need to carry longer items, and people in the back, through loading, three way split folding seat. Like that as well. Then being a BMW, there's the inevitable coat up there to have your jacket um, hung up when you're going to a business meeting. Classic BMW. Anyway, let's check out the boot. So, in terms of air ride capacity, this is as good as any car of this size. It actually has a 480 litre capacity, which is exactly the same as an Audi A4, but more than a Mercedes C-Class, more than a Jaguar XE, and more than a Volvo S60. Saloon boots aren't the most practical to load, but this one does have a nice wide opening, which does help you out. Also, there's not much of a load lip to lift stuff over. It's okay when you're needing to carry things in the back. You've got a couple of nets here and here, and there's places to tie stuff down there, and all the way in there if you want. There's a 12 volt socket if you need to plug in something like a drinks cooler. One thing that is a bit funny is that you have an automated tailgate on this car. Why do you need it? I mean, how hard is it to just like open a boot of this size? Anyway, if you need to carry longer items, you just pull these levers here, and it releases the seat backs, and then you have to lean in to push them down. There we go, and then you can carry longer items. For instance, you can fit a bike in this car with its wheels attached when you fold those seats down. Also, the seats folding down, you can fit in two large boxes on the back seats and two small boxes, then six further small boxes, two large suitcases, two small suitcases, and a soft bag, or a baby buggy. With the seats up, you can fit in two large suitcases into the boot and two medium suitcases, plus a set of golf clubs or a baby buggy. Do you want to play golf or do you want to take a baby buggy along with you? It's your choice. The actual amount you can fit in here isn't quite as much as you can fit in an Audi A4. Just the actual shape of the boot is a little bit more useful on that car. And that brings me on to five annoying things about the new BMW 3 Series. You can't get this car with Android Auto, yet you can get wireless key, which works with an Android phone to automatically unlock the car rather than having to use the key itself. Now, if you've got an Apple phone, it doesn't work. You have to use a special key card instead. The location of the USB input there means that if someone plugs in their mobile device and your phone is on the actual charging tray, if you grab it and suddenly pull it out, you can end up knocking their USB cable and damaging the connection, which will then result in an argument. And I know, because I've been there with somebody. If you're watching, you know I'm talking about you, yeah. The interview is a little bit mean sometimes. For instance, if you want lumbar support on the front seats, that's going to cost you about £250 extra, regardless of which model you go for. Also, when you get Apple CarPlay free for the first year, afterwards, you have to pay for it for some reason. The design of the extendable seat base means that if you or someone else eats crisps in your car, the crumbs can fall down and gather in this trough. Blech. The battery is underneath this false floor, but it's an absolute pig to get up, so you can't do it with your fingers alone. You're going to need something to lever it up, and it's... Come Honestly, this is going to take a while, guys. Come on, you... There we go. Come on. Come on. Oh. oh, really up my hands. Look, there it is, under there. That was just way too difficult. Why didn't they just have a little handle on it, for Christ's sake? It's not all negative, though. Here's five good things about this car. BMW has packed these front pillars of the car with foam to help keep the noise down from wind whistle as you're bombing along the motorway. The car's grille remains shut for most of the time and only opens when the engine needs some serious cooling. And that design does help improve this car's aerodynamics. In fact, it's the most aerodynamic car in its class according to BMW. The voice control personal assistant can respond to your mood. For instance, if I say to it, hey BMW. Hello, what can I help you with? I'm tired. All right, I have activated the Vitalize program. So it's going to try and wake me up by opening the sunroof blind, changing the ambient lighting from a normal boring colour to an invigorating green. 
It's also blasting the air conditioning on and off to try and wake me up and make me more alert. And it should have put some exciting music on the stereo. Oh yeah, I'm definitely wide awake now. Totally revitalized. Thanks BMW. The upgraded surround view parking system is absolutely brilliant. As you reverse and get close to an object, which is the car wow suitcase, it suddenly changes to a top-down view so you can get super, super close there without hitting it. Also, I like this. If you want to, you can switch to a 3D view and look around the car using gesture controls, which is quite fun. Look, whee! Brilliant. Compared to the old 3 Series, this new one, Centre of Gravity, is one centimetre lower to the ground. Its body is up to 50% stiffer and it weighs around 50 kilos lighter and all that helps improve the handling. Now let's talk about the 3 Series' engine lineup. So you can get 2 litre diesel or a 3 litre straight 6 diesel, a 2 litre petrol, a 2 litre petrol with an electric motor or a 3 litre straight 6 petrol. The lower powered cars, they're available with manual gearbox, but most of the range comes as standard with an eight speed automatic. The three series is normally rear wheel drive, but you can get certain versions with four wheel drive. But if you want the full details of the power outputs, the models and the economy, click on the pop out banner up there in the top right hand corner of the screen or follow the link below the video to go to CarWow. And while you're there, why not try our configurator? I put the details of this 320D xDrive M Sport into our configurator. It should cost £39,000, but I've got an offer back for £35,000. Go check out the configurator on CarWow for this car or any car. Okay then, let's see what this BMW 3 Series is like to drive. So I'm going to start off in town, and I should point out, depending on which model you go for, can alter the suspension. So normal cars, very soft over bumps, pretty good. Almost as good as an Audi A4, not quite. Then M Sports have stiffer suspension, so they're a bit more bumpy, but still all right. Then there's this car which has adaptive suspension, the M Sport Plus or something, I don't know, it's something like that. Anyway, it's got special adaptive suspension which you can change between a comfort and a sport setting. And in comfort, it does deal well with bumps, even though you can put it in a sporty setting if you want to drive quicker. As for the turning circle, it's all right. Not as good as a Mercedes C-Class. In fact, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of the Mercedes, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link below the video. But as you can see, it's still quite easy. And the steering, it's got a bit of weight to it, but it's not too heavy. The brakes, they can be a little bit jerky when you just touch them. They can respond a bit too quick. So when you're around town, it, it's not the smoothest of cars in that respect. But I'll tell you what is smooth, gearbox. Oh my gosh, this automatic gearbox in this 3 Series is as good as it gets in any of these kind of cars. I absolutely love it. But do I love this car when it comes to parking? Well, let's find out. There's a space there. It should be easily big enough to fit in. Right, this thing into reverse. Got my sensors and my cameras to help me out there. Visibility, oh, it's just the rear pillar is the issue, but it's not too bad at all. That door mirror is automatically folded down so I can see the curb so I don't scrape my expensive alloys. All the guidelines on the camera are helping and the beepy beeps. Oh, 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 let's get close. Oh, so close. <laughs> and just slot it into space. That was easy enough, that'll do. Quite happy with that. Piece of piddle, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get out of here. When you get out on the motorway, this new 3 Series is just as impressive. The old car was quite noisy, this one's fine. Engine and gearbox combination really excel here, so I'm gonna floor it, it's in comfort mode, boom, gearbox responds, car takes off. That's 70 miles an hour, 50 to 70. This two litre diesel engine in this 320D really does have some good pulling power. Gets a little bit noisier as you rev it out, but yeah, can't argue with the performance, it's quick. Then there's the economy. 44 miles per gallon. There is still reason to have a diesel, and if you're doing lots and lots of motorway miles, get this 320D, okay? Ignore the haters, get it. You're gonna be better off with it. Round town, different matter, go for one of the petrols. Finally then, we need to see what this three series is like on a twisty road. And put the gearbox into manual, the car into sports mode, so that adds weight to the steering, sharpens the throttle response, 
increases the shift from the gearbox and because we've got the adaptive suspension it firms it up so come on then this one's rear wheel drive you can get an all-wheel drive version rear wheel drive is really good for handling because the rear wheels do the drive the front do the steering and oh my god the steering is super sharp really precise you know exactly what the car's doing and it grips and goes round it feels great on a twisty road it is fun to drive BMW have nailed this it's good in all areas it's good in town it's good on the motorway it's comfy it's quiet and it's fun it could possibly be the only car you ever need when you get the M340i. That'd be the one I'd have. Because then you've got that straight six petrol and the performance to go with the handling and the comfort. Brilliant. So then, what's my final verdict on the new BMW 3 Series? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, this car, it's comfy, it's practical, it's good to drive and it's desirable. And I think it's the best all round family car. So you should just go right ahead and buy it. Whee! <laughs>